Hi, Ben here at Arteo Arden. Today we're going to look at our three choices of widening mask. The pros and cons, the functions, and which one is best suited for each widening process. Okay, so choosing the correct mask for your wilding processes and applications is massively important. So I'm going to run through each one and hopefully that'll help you decide which one's best for you. Um, we're going to start with the Speedmaster 2. It's our entry level mask, but it's still full of plenty of features. So it's an auto darkening mask with a, with a standard viewing area. It's great for MIG work, MMA, stick welding, some basic TIG work as well, it'll handle fine. On the side is your shade adjustment and that ranges from 9 to 13. It also has a grind mode feature, so when that's enabled, the mask will not darken, which is a shade five, so it's fixed at that. On the inside, you've got full sensitivity adjustment and delay adjustment. On the outside, you've got your two sensors, and there's your solar panel, which keeps your batteries topped up. Full headgear adjustment with a nice front padded area for your forehead. An upper size adjustment along with the rear, which just pushes in on a dial, and then adjust from left to right if you want it smaller or larger. A point worth mentioning is the dials on the side because these will adjust how much friction there is when you lift the mask up and down. You can have it really loose so it's always down. You can have it sort of in the middle so when you move your head and nod it, it will fall down nicely. Or you can have it where you have to physically move it up and down. It's personal preference, it's whatever works for you. So it comes fitted with an outer and inner lens and these protect the actual auto darkening filter itself. You also get one of each spare in the box along with the owner's manual. So we'll just quickly run through how you change the lenses. It's really simple. The front one, you just pop him out, like so. And with your new one, it just slides into one side, give him a little bend, and then he pops. On the inner, it's a similar scenario. You've got a little divot for your finger at the top. Just get behind there, and pop out your filter, and then reverse that to place a new one in. So this is vital protection for the actual darkening filter itself from spatter or casual debris and you want to change them fairly often because then you, you'll still be able to see exactly what you're doing. So there it is, our Auto Darkening Speedmaster 2. Still plenty of features, great value for money, just a good all-rounder. Right, the Speedmaster XL. As the name suggests, it's got an XL viewing area compared to the Speedmaster 2, and this measures 100 by 60 mil, so a greater viewing area for any wild zones. So again, you can use this for MIG or MMA, but it is also more suited for any TIG work. It's got a minimum sensitivity of five amps, so any low amp TIG work is, is ideal. All the adjustments are on the inside. You've got a wild grind mode switch. So when in grind mode, the mask will not darken at all, which stays at a shade five. You've got a really handy south check button, so before you even start welding, you can press that button and check that your mask is actually darkening. You've got three dials. On your left is your sensitivity from low to high. In the middle, you've got shade adjustment from nine to 13. And then on the right, you've got your delay adjustment. It's powered by a solar cell on the front and two internal LI batteries, which can be replaced. They just pop out nice and easily and they're your flat sort of round type. And we estimate those to last around 6,000 hours. So a really good battery life. Also, that south check button that I mentioned inside, above there is your low battery indicator. So if that ever illuminates, that's telling you that your batteries are running low. Full adjustment on the headgear with a nice front padded for your forehead. The upper part has size adjustment and also the rear, which is done with a dial, which you just push in and move left to right to loosen and tighten. The dial on the side is important. If you loosen that right off, that will allow you to change how close or far away it is from your face. But also the tension on that dial will differ how the mask reacts on your head. So if you tighten it right down, you have to physically move the mask, loosen it right off and it just stay down. If you put it sort of in the middle, just a nod of the head will bring it down nicely. It's all personal preference and just do what works for you. It comes fitted with an outer and inner lens to protect your auto darkening filter. You also get one of each spare in the box along with your owner's manual. How you replace them is nice and simple. The best way I've found is to actually remove the ADF from the mask. There's two small clips inside that just push across one, Two, lift from the bottom, take your ADF out, and then you're left with the ADF. So it's important to be careful because now the auto darkening filter is exposed. So you, know, you don't really want to get any fingerprints or touch it if you can help it. At the top above the Artec writing, just pull that up and remove the ADF itself from the plastic frame. Turn them over. 
So then you're left with your inner lens. There's small indents for your fingers on the sides. Get your finger underneath there, slide them out, and that's it removed. So then with your new one, just slide them in from the left or right, push them all the way across until it clicks in, and that's your inner done. Put the ADF back into the plastic frame, set that to the side, and for the outer, you go from the inside of the mask. I push from the outside, that pops him out, and then just pull him out. So the outer lens is housed in this rubber seal, and all you do is just slide them outwards, and out he pops. So replace it, remember which way it came out, and just pop him in. Slide it down, ensuring that it's fitted all the way around the edges securely, and then reassemble. So pop him back in, it just pushes in, nice and easy. Refit your ADF. And then just your clips go back in. Make sure it's all nice and secure in there that it's not gonna fall out. And you're done. So there's the Speedmaster XL. Great features, great value for money. Really good all rounder, but it is the one I would point to if you're gonna do a majority of TIG work. So here we have our top of the range True Color HD XXL mask. So a massive viewing area of 100 by 80 mil. So a greater visibility of any wild zones. So what we mean by the True Color HD is a more realistic color tone, closer to what the naked eye would see. So that green tint is gone. So as you can see, an improved view of the wild puddle, which gives you less eye strain, which is then gonna improve productivity. So for any really detailed or low amp TIG work, this is a mask for you. So for its features and adjustments, it's a full digital panel. So you must remember to turn it on. There's just a little on off button. You just hold that and it turns on. You've then got a mode button, which switches from wild to cut to grind. The function button, which when in wild or cuts will change your shade, sensitivity and delay. Then a negative and positive button to adjust your actual functions. So when in wild mode, you've got shade adjustment from nine to 13, then press your function button to get into sensitivity. This ranges from one to 10, and then into the delay, which is one to 10 also. In cut mode, you can change your shade from five to eight. So this can be used for plasma cutting or really low amp TIG work where you want a nice light shade. Good amount of sensitivity, again, you've got one to 10, and delay is one to 10 also. Grind mode is fixed at shade four, and that's it. So it will automatically turn itself off, but if you hold the off button for a few seconds, it will power down. On the front, you've got your four sensors, so nice and sensitive, and then your solar cell, which powers two LI batteries internally, and we estimate them to last around 6,000 hours. They're easy to replace, you just remove the darkening filter, and then they just pop out the side, and they're your round sort of flat type battery. There is also a low battery indicator on the inside, so if this illuminates, you know it's time to replace those batteries. There's full headband adjustment with a nice cushioned front area for your forehead. Upper size adjustment, the rear has a dial which you push in and move left to right to make it smaller or larger. It's worth mentioning the dials on the side. If you loosen those right off, then that will adjust how close or far away the mask is to your face. You've got a bit of adjustment there. These will adjust how much tension there is when the mask is on your head. So if you have it really loose, the mask will just stay down. If you have it really tight, then you have to move the mask physically. But if you have it sort of in the middle, you can have it so when you nod your head, it falls down nicely. It's all personal preference and it's up to you. It comes fitted with an outer and inner lens to protect your auto darkening filter. There's also one of each in the box along with your owner's manual. To replace these is nice and simple. The best way is to actually remove the filter itself. There's just two little clips at the bottom that slide across. So one, two, and then lift from the bottom upwards and then just slide them out. Just flip them over. It's important to be careful because your actual filter is exposed now, but there's two little tabs at the top sort of holding it in place. Just bend them out slightly, push them upwards, and then your ADF itself will just pull out. So the housing is just set to one side, flip them back round, and then you'll see two little indents for your finger to get behind. Get behind there, and just slide them out. And then when you've got your new one, just do the reverse, slide them in from one side, all the way in till it clicks into place, and that's in nice and secure. And then the filter goes back into its housing, and he's ready to go in, but before we do that, we'll replace the outer. 
So your outer lens from the outside of the mask, just push him upwards and he just pops out. And then the lens is inside a little plastic housing. Just push him upwards, there's two arrows showing which way it pushes and he just slides out. And the new one, you just do the opposite, slide him in, making sure it's all seated correctly. And then just reassemble. So the outer just pushes in and sits there. And then the ADF just needs to go back in, which will seal it all back up. There's two pegs at the top of the ADF housing. They just slide into their slots and then push him downwards, holding him down, slide your clips across, and that's done. So there we are, the True Color HD XXL mask. Great quality, one year warranty, excellent features, and as said, definitely aimed at your low amp detail TIG work, but there's no reason why you can't use it for your MIG and MMA also. One thing worth noting, all three masks will fit a magnifier lens. These come in different magnifications and they literally just slot on the inside of the mask. And these enable you to see that a little bit closer and just a handy little product. So I hope that's helped answer any queries between the differences of our masks and which one suits you. So really quick basic summary. We've got our entry level Speedmaster 2, great for MIG, great for MMA, also basic TIG work. You then got our Speedmaster XL, Again, great for MIG or MMA, but also pointed more towards TIG with that bigger viewing area, four sensors, and will darken from five amps. Then you go on to our top of the range True Color HD XXL mask, so an even bigger viewing area, four sensors again, but it will darken from less than five amps and a greater range of shade. So which wilding mask you choose is gonna be down to your budget, which wilding process and applications you're gonna be doing, and just personal preference. Hope that helped, thanks for watching.